Hi everyone, this is Nick, and today I wanted to show you this pretty cool technique that you can embed photos inside of your bar charts in PowerPoint. And I learned this technique from Minda Treacy over at my online training hub. I'm gonna put her link uh, below to her YouTube channel. I hope that you will subscribe to that. She has also a bazillion other resources um, when it comes to Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so definitely go give her uh, a like and a subscribe. And I'll, again, I'll put the link down in the show notes. But I wanted to show you how I made this in PowerPoint. Now, Minda's video uh, was with a different type of bar chart, a column chart, and she uh, did it inside of Excel. And I'm gonna show you how to do this right inside of PowerPoint. So this uh, is some visitor studies, uh, visitor experience data from places like zoos, aquariums, museums. And I thought it would be really interesting, a, a really interesting way to sort of compare different organizations or different organization types if you had some data that compared uh, across those organization types. Or maybe you work for a museum or another visitor serving organization and you want to be able to compare different exhibits along the same visitor experience metric. So I thought this was kind of a fun and engaging way to sort of present some of that information. And you can see here in my example, I've kind of color coded the title. Uh, that's a great technique to use to sort of draw your reader's attention to the places that you want to show in your audience, but then also make sure to direct, uh, directly label those experiences because we don't know how our different audiences might perceive color. So uh, in this case, zoos, I colored orange, uh, aquariums blue and gardens green. And so we embedded this photo of a lion into the zoo bar chart. We embedded a photo of this clownfish into the aquarium bar chart and then we embedded the photo uh, of just a beautiful sort of uh, garden landscape inside the garden bar chart and these are three separate bar charts um, and we're gonna put them all inside of PowerPoint so I'm gonna go ahead and escape out of this slide we'll go over to my PowerPoint deck I already have uh, a PowerPoint slide here a blank PowerPoint slide here and the first thing that we want to do is find our photos so what we're gonna do is go up to the insert tab pictures I'm just gonna go to stock images and let's go ahead and just search for lion you can pick anything that you want here I think this was the photo that I chose so I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one it's going to probably fill the entire slide we don't need to fill the whole slide so I'm gonna push shift and just drag that down and then what we're gonna do is we'll insert another photo for our aquarium I think I just search for aquarium on this one and you'll get a whole bunch of different options um, let's see I'm gonna pick this clownfish right there and again I'm going to go ahead and just resize that we're actually just gonna get rid of these photos at some point so it doesn't really matter what size you make and then let's go ahead and insert our garden photo gardens let's see if what comes up I think here was my photo right here that I liked now the thing that we want to do is you could keep them full color but I want to be less as least uh, the, the least amount of distracting as I can in my bar chart so we're gonna actually recolor all of these photos to be uh, black and white so I'm gonna highlight the picture up here in the picture format tab you are going to go over to the adjust column and under this color option you get a whole bunch of different uh, options in terms of recoloring the saturation tone uh, and even different colors too so in this case I just want black and white and I want this really light shade of, of black and white down here ice blue uh, I'm gonna keep that one and we're gonna actually do the same thing to this clownfish and the same thing to this garden all right, I'm gonna zoom back just a little bit and I'm going to kind of place these images off to the side over on the pasteboard. Now let's go ahead and insert a bar chart. Now the first thing I wanna show you is I have an Excel file and this is where all of my data are. So these are my ratings right here and then these are the data for the zoos, aquariums, and gardens. Now in the when you have a chart like this, I like to sort of sort, um, I like to sort the data intentionally. So we wanna make sure that it's sorted either greatest to least or least to greatest, however you sort of like that. So this first one here on the zoos and I sorted greatest to least. Now they, these are the same ratings. So we actually just sorted the entire lot like this because we wanna make sure that they're, the, um, that they're the exact same. So I sorted the entire thing right here. I'm gonna right click, sort my data. I'm just gonna say custom sort. I know this is a little 
longer than I probably need to be, but I'm gonna say smallest to largest there and click OK. Now I did smallest to largest because I know when I visualize this data in Excel or PowerPoint in a bar chart, it's actually just gonna automatically give me the exact opposite order of what my source data looks like. So that's something that maybe Excel could change in the future. Um, but right now, this is how it's going to look here. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you is that I have this other series of data. So the, this in column B right here, that's my data. Uh, that's my actual visitor experience rating data. And same thing for aquarium and garden. But then I have these extra series of data right here. These are white bars because our bar charts are actually gonna be stacked bar charts. So we need two different series of data. And this is kind of like my buffer or my placeholder data. And all this is, is a formula um, and we type equals 100% minus whatever is in cell B4. So that the total of these two will equal 100%. And so you can just say equals one minus that cell right there. And then I will just copy that formula down and that gives me that perfect formula. And you can go ahead and copy this across and you can see that will update and be responsive as well. So make sure to set up your data like this. I'm gonna go ahead and copy just the zoo right now because we're gonna make one chart from this data. So I'm gonna push Control C and copy that. We'll minimize my source data here. Now let's go to our PowerPoint slide and insert a chart. So I'm gonna to go to Insert tab, I'm gonna to go to the Chart button here, and then what we're gonna do is go to the bar, the horizontal bar option, and what I want is the 100% stacked bar chart. So we'll go there, I'm gonna click OK, and we're gonna get the CAN, the, the default um, bar chart in Microsoft Excel. Uh, Microsoft, the Excel source is gonna pop up here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push right click and paste. Uh, I'm gonna paste as values right there. And then we don't need the series D. I'll just show you what it looks like. We don't need this uh, extra series that Excel or PowerPoint gives us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And now we have the makings of our first bar chart right here. Now I'm gonna go, go ahead and resize this just a little bit. And I'm gonna move this over. I know that eventually I'm gonna have to do this two more times for two other charts, so I wanna make sure that there's space. And we don't need the legend on this, so I'm gonna delete it. We don't need the title, uh, so I'm gonna delete that. And then we don't need the grid lines here, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. And we also don't need the x-axis label, so I'm gonna delete those too. Okay, we're getting, we're getting somewhere, I think. Okay, the first thing that I wanna do, this is a little counterintuitive. So we're actually not gonna put that picture inside the bar. We're gonna put the picture inside the plot area, which is actually, if you click anywhere between the bars, you get this whole highlighted section here. This is called the plot area. So I wanna fill that with something. Now over here, when in the plot uh, format plot area menu, you can actually do anything you want to this fill area. I could uh, fill it with a solid color. Let's fill it with this red color just so you can see. So this is kind of a way that you can update just this part or portion of the chart. In this case, what we wanna do is we're gonna fill it with a picture. But I, this is the zoo uh, photo, so I'm gonna go ahead over to the lion photo, highlight that, I'm gonna push Control C, which will copy that photo, it'll put it on my paste uh, on the clipboard, and so it's kind of living behind the scenes. We're gonna go back to my chart, highlight that plot area again, go over to that paint bucket so you can start editing that. We're gonna click picture or text fill here, and I'm gonna say from clipboard. So let's go ahead and say from clipboard. Now I had previously copied, I think, uh, that garden photo. So the initial, if I click on picture initially, that it automatically gave me that garden photo. Um, but now it's gonna give me the lion photo when I, once I push from clipboard. If you had an image that was saved on your computer, you could say insert here, and then just like you're attaching a file or inserting a file from somewhere else, you would navigate to that location on your computer. So okay, so we have this background of a lion right here. But now what we need to do is we need to work with the width of the bars to really fill the entire space. So what we're gonna do here is click on any of the bars and then go over to the Format Data Series menu. Under Gap Width here, it's set to 150. We want it to be set to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and say zero. I'm also gonna do something else with these. I'm also gonna put apply a white border to my bars. So let's go up to the paint bucket here and say border it's set to automatic, uh, which is kind of uh, the blue, but I'm gonna say solid line, and we're gonna update that color to white. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my other series here. I'm gonna click on this um, extra series, and we're gonna say solid line, and it's gonna be white. Now let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and make the chart just a little bit bigger. Okay, so now this is gonna be our white series, or our spacer series. So we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna color this completely white, solid fill, 
And then what we want to do with the blue ch with the blue bars is we're going to set this to no fill, so it's totally see through or transparent. So we're going to say no fill there, and now we can see that beautiful lion photo coming through. That is so cool. Now the thing is, I wanted to um, highlight a few of the bars to draw my reader's attention to those bars. So those were the first two. They were rated most welcoming and safe. So what I'm going to do is just double click on the bar to isolate it and go over here to the paint bucket, solid fill, and we're going to color that orange. And when I do that, it covers the, let's do this with the other one too so you can see, it covers the entire photo with that solid orange. So what we want to do is apply some transparency to this orange fill. So once you're over here with that bar highlighted, you can go ahead down here to the transparency. You can see that it's set to 0%. Let's just go ahead and increase this one by one just a little bit. I'm going to say, let's actually just do like 30% or maybe even more. Let's do 60%. Now you can start seeing that line coming through there. So I'm going to update that to 60% as well. And that is really, really pretty. So let's go ahead and let's see. We can adjust um, font size here if we want to, but I'm going to, I think I'm going to be okay with that. Let's go ahead and just zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. I'm going to scroll over here. Now the thing is we want to duplicate this chart. So I'm just going to say Control D. And I'm going to get rid of our y-axis labels. We don't need that anymore. But you can see that it then stretches uh, the, the size of the chart. And we want these si the plot area of these charts to be the exact same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click both of these. We're going to align them perfectly to the top with our arrange tools here, OK? So align top. And then what I'm going to do, it's kind of, um, I'm going to actually make sure that this entire chart is set to no fill because I want us to be able to see through the back. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to nudge this over so that it aligns perfectly on that y-axis line. And then what I'm going to do is adjust the size of the chart. When I do that, we'll be able to see. Now you can see that, uh, that back, uh, the behind the scenes of that chart. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to drag it over just so I think it's almost perfect. And then what I can do is just nudge this chart down a little bit to make sure that these top bars are the same length. And so I'm just going to nudge this over even more. It looks perfect right there. So that's really nice. It's kind of a brute force uh, trick, but you want to make sure when you're doing these small multiple bar charts or side-by-side -side bar charts that um, the intention is to compare, right? So you want to make sure that the, the size of the chart is the exact same. The size of the actual plot area is the same. OK, so this is going to be for my gardens. I'm actually going to click both of these and make it uh, put these a little bit lower like that because I eventually want to put some text boxes right up here. And so this is going to be my aquarium data. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm actually going to go ahead and un I'm going to uh, say no fill to all of these again. And then what we want to do is highlight the plot area. But you can see now since my uh, bars are so thick, it's really hard to get um, that actual to click on that plot area. So a trick here that you can do is highlight this chart. Go over to the far, uh, format chart area. Under chart options, this drop down menu shows all the different components of the chart. So right here, I'm going to say plot area. And then you can see it highlights the plot area for me. And what we're going to do is go back over to our aquarium photo, push Control-C to copy so it gets onto our clipboard. We'll go back to the chart. I'm going to highlight the plot area. And then under the paint bucket, we're going to say picture. It's already set to picture. And we're going to say from clipboard. And now that will change to my clownfish. Pretty, pretty cool. And then what we want to do is we want to update these data. So I'm going to go back to my source data here in my Excel file. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight these data right here. I'm just going to push Control C. We'll minimize. We're going to open the chart source here. Right click, edit data. The Excel source pops up. And now I can go ahead and paste my aquarium data here. And now that will update the chart. Now I wanted to also highlight these three bars here, beautiful public spaces, engaging learning experience, and beautiful uh, exhibits or animal habitats. So we're going to do the same technique here. I'm going to click twice to isolate. We're going to do the solid fill blue. Let's update the transparency to 60%. And we'll do the exact same thing, 60% and 60%. Oops, there we go, 60%. Now let's do the same thing. Now we can actually duplicate this chart because we've sized it perfectly. So I'm going to say Control D to duplicate. And I'm going to move that over here. Go ahead and just make sure that these are all aligned to the top. 
and I'm also going to distribute them horizontally so that they're perfectly spaced. That looks really nice. And now what we want to do is go and copy our garden photo. Control C for the garden photo. Let's go over back here, plot area, and the paint bucket, the picture of Phil from clipboard, and now we have our gorgeous garden. I'm going to go ahead and update the color on that too. I wanted that to be green. And since this transparency is already set, we don't have to do that this time. Perfect. Now the other thing we want to do is we might want to label uh, these bars. So we can always label them from the inside since this is a stacked bar chart. So you can put your labels here and then adjust the position here over on the format data label menu. Go ahead and say inside end. And that might look OK. Or you might want to put these labels on the outside of the bar. And that's not quite as easy. So you could, one by one, drag them outside the bar. I don't recommend that option. We're going to undo this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select all of them and just delete them. Remember, this is a stacked bar chart. So there are two series of bars right here. In the white series, I'm going to go ahead and add labels to this series here. And we're going to say inside end. Uh, oh, we're going to say inside base. Yeah, that works. Inside base is, is what's going to work here for us. I'm going to go ahead and recolor these labels orange so that they're the same thing. Now, you'll notice that these are not the correct data because this is showing the data of that white series, that placeholder series. So what we need to do here is with the chart labels highlighted, go over to the format data label menu, click on that bar chart icon. It's already up here for me. Right here it says uh, the checkbox under label options is selected value. We want to unselect that and say value from cells. When we do that, the source data uh, will appear. And then what you're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and select the data from the range right there and say OK. And click OK. And now the data is all perfectly aligned in that way. All right, now we're going to do the same thing on the aquarium bar chart here. I'm going to highlight the white series right here. We'll put labels there. We will color them blue. We will adjust the position to inside base. And then we will click unselect value and select value from cells. We'll let the source data pop up here. And I will point to that row here. We'll push OK. That looks nice, and we'll do the same thing one more time for our gardens. Let's color them green, adjust the position, and then select the value from cells. And we'll go ahead and just drag that right there, click OK. And now we have these three beautiful bar charts. Now, the spacing you can adjust, so let's just go ahead and adjust each of these. I'm going to go ahead to the format menu and adjust this the width down by maybe two clicks. So one, two, and then just make sure to adjust each by two clicks. One, two, and one, two. And that should look really nice. And then for the top labels, I'm just going to insert a text box here. So we'll insert this text box. And I'm going to say zoos. And let's go ahead and make that bold and orange. Actually, let's just go ahead and do this big condensed black here. A couple font sizes, maybe 24 font. And I'm going to go ahead and push Control D to duplicate this. We'll move it over this way. Snap it up there. Really nice. Aquariums. Let's make this blue. And let's just nudge it to make it perfect. And then we'll do this for gardens. And we'll make that green. This is looking so nice. I love it so much. Let's just highlight them all, make sure that they're aligned to the top so that they're perfectly aligned. Really, really nice. And now I'm going to put this in slideshow mode so you can see. We're going to swap this. <laughs> that always does that to me. Um, but look, it looks like a really nice bar chart, uh, kind of a small multiple comparative bar chart, one, two, three, for three different sites. You could use this uh, in, a whole different, in a whole number of ways, and I'm really curious to see how you do. So please let me know how you use that in the comments below. 
Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it for you. Such a cool trick uh, from Minda Treacy over at my online training hub. I'm going to put her show, her link in the show notes below. So make sure uh, to check her out and all of her amazing resources. If you like this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell next to it too, so that you get notified every time I post a new data design tutorial in Excel, PowerPoint, or Word. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friends, Carly and Ryan. I hope that you are watching uh, back in Denver. And if you get this, please uh, give me a little wink or an emoji in the comments so that I know you saw it. All right. I miss you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.